Hey, what's up? Like, totally time for 90210. Well, hello, dudes and dudettes. <laughs> Welcome back to the 90210 show. My name is Mark. With me, as always, is my best dudette, my fiance, <laughs> Carol. How are you doing today, Carol? Hey, what's up? Not much has been a good week here. It is July 24th, 1998. You seem so happy about it. I am. <laughs> it's summer. It's summer. Yeah, it is. It's a nice day. Kids are out of school. Uh, so they're running around annoying us out in the lawn. People like, are... Walking on our grass. People who are teachers are, uh, you know, having vacations. Are we teachers? Are we in school? Are we a different age? We don't know. <laughs> so 90210. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth transition. Um, Kelly? Kelly. The way we weren't. Kelly is pissing me off again. All right. We're coming in hot starting with Kelly. All right. Well, we don't have to start with Kelly. No, I'm just, start, I'm just start saying. With, start with Kelly. So, you know, she has amnesia yeah. from last episode. Love it. And she's starting to remember some things. A few things. Not many, but a few. No. But none of them are Brandon. No. And that's making him very sad. He's a sad Brandon. (laughs) I'm a sad Brandon. What I... I don't understand, though. Okay. Okay. Brandon, like... He's kind of dropping the ball, I think. Yeah, a little. I mean, it doesn't seem like he's there at the hospital a lot. Right. Now, weirdly, who is there at the hospital a lot? Um, uh, Juan. Noah? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I said his name backwards. What? (laughs) You're so weird. (laughs) Yeah, the new dude from Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I saw his name in a mirror, so. Okay. (laughs) Brad Rum. Exactly. Um. So, like, they're supposed to be doing all this stuff to jog Kelly's memory, right? Mm. So Donna brings her in a bunch of pictures from their Hawaii trip, which, like... Did Donna bring them? I feel like Donna hasn't seen her because she's been so busy. Donna saw her. Did she? Okay. All right. Yeah. She was there. Okay. Pretty sure she's the one that gave her the pictures. All right. Might have been Brandon, but I don't know. I, I, Brandon was going through the pictures with her, I know. Because her and Donna were talking about Noah. Oh, no. Wasn't that Valerie? N- no. Valerie and her were talking about Noah. Oh, God, you're right. You're right. Valerie brought her a bunch of old yearbooks. Yeah, Donna was just talking to them on the phone. So, never mind. Yeah, yeah. Valerie brought her in a bunch of yearbooks. Somebody brought her pictures from Hawaii, but Valerie brought I her yearbooks. I think it was Brandon, because I kept feeling like if only she could see her best friend, meal ticket Tori Spelling. <laughs> Then she'd understand who she is. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Donna, the people who should be there are not there. The people who have no business being there are there. Yeah. It's weird. Noah has Noah business being there. (laughs) It's true. He barely knows her. Yeah. But, okay, so Valerie's there being a sneaky bitch, because that's what she does. Valerie made me laugh so much. She's, She's like... First of all, they're acting like they're good friends Mm -hmm. because Kelly doesn't remember her. Yeah, she doesn't remember that she hates her. She's like, oh, I know we just hung out in high school and college and stuff. And Valerie's like, actually, actually, the dark haired woman you hung out with in uh, uh, high school, you got kicked off the show. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I didn't meet you until later. Uh, Until your claws were already out. And (laughs) she's like, "Um, but uh, yeah, you know, we're good friends or whatever. Uh, and she's like, you know what, though? With Brandon, I mean, you weren't wearing that ring, were you? <laughs> it's so awful. And like, she lives with them both. Mm. So what the fuck? She's all like, you know, I'm just saying that maybe it wasn't 100% what everyone thinks it was. And maybe you shouldn't. Be... Don't believe everything they tell you. Yeah. <laughs> That's what she said to her. Trust in me. <laughs> she said. Right. Hold it, car. 
She really was, though, like, wearing the ring around her neck still because mm-hmm. he hasn't proposed again. No, he hasn't. Yeah, he hasn't given her a second proposal. Which is weird because he said something about, like, when I proposed to you the first time because she asked him about the ring. Mm-hmm. As though there was another time, but there was no other time. No, I think it was just uh, in precise English language. <laughs> right. So, yeah, so Valerie's planting the seeds of doubt yeah. about Brandon. Which is fucked up. So now she's going to be like, oh, maybe I don't know him as well. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, what about Noah? And she's like, oh, you don't you don't know Noah. (laughs) You don't really know anything about him. And she's like, oh, but uh, they said he didn't have a girlfriend. And Brandon said you weren't interested in him (laughs) because she doesn't think he has money. So she's not interested because he doesn't have money. Right. And. She's like, oh, he said that. She says, yeah. And she's like, well, you know, I just think you could do better than Noah. (laughs) That's not a good argument, by the way. No. And if she really wants to break Brandon and Kelly up, sacrifice Noah. Yeah. Was he that good in bed? Yeah, it's weird. I mean, they're definitely not dating. They hooked up the one time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she said she doesn't want him. Yeah. So I don't get it. I don't know. She, but like, you know how she is. She, she doesn't want Kelly to have anything. Well, yeah. And like, it's not the first time she said she didn't want a guy, but she also didn't want Kelly to have him. So yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, so she keeps staring at this fucking picture of Noah with a shirt off, which is just hilarious to me because it's like, why is it that like women are supposed to be all like fawning over dudes who don't have their shirts on? Like, no. That's never been a thing. I'll be honest. Like, sometimes if I'm in a goofy mood, I'll pretend like it. Like, hey, look at that guy. If I'm in a goofy no, mood. No, I mean, like, seriously, like, with my girlfriends, we're like, oh, he's so hot. But it's like, no. I mean, like, who cares? A guy without a shirt on. Like, that's not any more attractive to me than a guy with his shirt on. I don't really? care. Is that weird? I don't know. I'm not like, a girl. I feel like it's just one of those things that girls do, but I don't know if it's for real or if I'm just broken somehow or I don't think that's hot. I think that there are some women that are into muscles and they like to see all the muscles. Yeah. And I think there are some women that aren't into muscles and don't really care about seeing the muscles. Yeah, I guess that's me. I, so I don't think it's weird. I think it's just a different preference. Um, she sure looks like she's enjoying whatever is going on in that picture. Oh, yeah. He's not even that built. No, he's not. So it's like, what are you he's drooling dec- about? He's decently lean, but his he's he's doesn't have a ton of muscular. Trauma. Brandon's got more muscle than him. Yeah, well, Steve's got the most muscle of any of them. Yeah, and we never see, hardly ever see Brandon without a shirt on because Brandon's always like busy and doing business stuff. I feel like, but I feel like. Jason Priestley might not be as lean as he wants to be to have his son. I mean, that's the thing is like, there's a difference between going to the beach without your shirt on, just like with a bunch of people and stuff like that. And being on camera where everyone is going to pour over every inch of your skin and right. you know, stuff like that. So he's had his shirt off a couple times and I'm sure that it's been after like a couple weeks of dieting and making sure he's as lean as possible so those abs are popping and everything. He might not have visible abs right now. I don't like he's Jason Priestley is certainly not out of shape. He's certainly not no. not overweight or anything like that. But um I mean he might not be as lean as he wants. He might not have the the defined abs right now. I don't know about his abs, but I did notice the other day like his muscles in his arms seem to be bigger than they were. Oh, I'm sure he's gotten older. muscles grow with age yeah really (laughs) no but you you, it takes a while it takes several years to reach your genetic potential for muscle growth okay so if he started lifting when he was like 17 or 18 years old yeah about 25 26 is when he's going to reach his genetic potential for muscle growth without taking uh extra genus uh, things like steroids so that's the one thing that i think i do like is arm muscles more steroids no uh, arms though arms i'll look at yeah not not chess noah just does nothing for me yeah (laughs) yes i like your arms (laughs) i have big muscly arms he does big muscly arms 
So Noah has been at the hospital. Yeah. Brandon came and Noah's there and he's like giving her stuff to keep her occupied. And what? Oh, Brandon's giving her Noah. Stuff? Noah, okay. Noah had brought her some stuff, like some magazines and things and like yeah. just as you know Not he, when Brandon was there, but yeah. But Brandon came at the end when he like they passed each other. Oh really? I thought so. Okay. And so, I don't remember, but yeah, probably. And then Noah's like, I'll check back in on you as he's leaving. It's like, why? Like, if mm-hmm. anything, you've done your duty now. If there was any duty there to begin with, right. it's done. But he's going to come back and check on her later. And This was before he bought her flowers and the stuffed animal? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because she asks for Winston. Yeah. She asks this almost perfect stranger to bring her Winston, which is her childhood teddy bear, we find out. And he brings her a pack of cigarettes of Winston's. <laughs> that would have been funny. Um, so I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not remembering everything because you know how I am. But I thought Brandon saw him leaving after bringing her things and saying he's going to come back and check on her. I think you're right. And I feel like then that should have been a cue to Brandon to stay as much as he can with mm-hmm. Kelly. But he doesn't do that. Well, every time he talks to Kelly, he, so, so I think part of the problem is, is every time he talks to Kelly, he's like, hey, do you remember me now? And she's like, no, I don't remember you. I don't remember loving you. And so it hurts him and he doesn't like it and he doesn't like being around it. But instead, what he should be doing is just talking to her about her life. And yeah. Like, he shouldn't be so focused on his relationship with her. He should be focused on just helping her remember things and get better. Yeah, helping her recover because yeah. that will help their relationship. Yeah. Because you know if she gets her memory back, she's going to be like, oh, my God, Brandon. And that's and the thing is, is that's kind of what Noah's doing. Kind of Noah does, didn't have a previous relationship with her. Right. So he's not trying to jog her memory about specific parts of her memory. He's just trying to help her remember stuff. Yeah. So he's the one that she's like, oh, he's being so nice. It's like the Florence Nightingale. Well, and she's not effect. disappointing him. Yeah. So I'm sure that feels better. Exactly. Because, I mean, it's uncomfortable for Brandon. I'm sure it's uncomfortable for her, too, to keep being like, yeah, no, sorry, and right. seeing him look sad. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So Noah springs her from the hospital he talks the doctor into giving her a day pass because the doctor says that she's physically healthy Mm -hmm. but not mentally i kind of call bullshit and shenanigans here i don't think that the doctor would keep her in the hospital if she's physically healthy and the only thing they're working on now is her memory yeah i don't understand why they she needs to be there to be monitored for her memory no she doesn't it's stupid yeah they should send her home. She has both apparently retrograde and antegrade amnesia, which means that she there are parts of her memory that she cannot access, so she has partial amnesia or, you know, for, it, it, she can remember a lot of stuff about her when she was real little, apparently, but not so much more recently. And she has trouble making new memories, too. Which... That I don't see that though. They're doing a really bad job of that if that's supposed to be true because like she knows who Noah is. Yeah. And he's new. One time she says, I can hardly remember today to Brandon. Mm-hmm. But that and that's it. That's the only reference we get to it other than what the doctor says. Or actually Brandon's the one that says it. Yeah. Because he great gathers all the troops together and says, Here's what we're gonna do to help her remember. I'm gonna be absent most of the time. <laughs> So, yeah, so Noah seems like he's trying to get in there. Yes, he does. And then when Brandon calls him out on his bullshit. Yeah, because they, they come back from the walk. He's given her flowers and the, Winston, teddy, and the yeah. teddy bear. And Brandon's like, where the fuck were you people? Mm-hmm. It's, I've been waiting here for two hours. And they're like, well, we went for a walk on the beach. He's like, don't you think that's a bit much? And they, they you know, whatever. And then he, and I think it's hilarious that Noah's like defending himself. I know. He knows he's wrong. Mm Mm-hmm. So then Brandon tracks him down at the marina and is like, hey, what's up, Brandon? And he goes, yeah, fuck you. And he's like, you know what? Um, Brandon's got quite the mouth on him there, Mark. (laughs) 
Brandon's like, get your ass down here. And he's like, hey, um, we can talk from right here. I don't need to come down there. <laughs> and he's like, get down here now. And so he comes down and he's he's like, you know, like they, they jaw at each other. Essentially, Brandon's like, stay away from her. Um, although he doesn't specifically say stay away from her. He's like, that's, uh, you know, my girlfriend and everything. He's like, oh, yeah. He's like, oh, I'm glad we agree on that. And... He's like, look, I'm just trying to help her. I'm just trying to get her to the place she needs to be. That's all. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you and Kelly are meant to be, he <laughs> says. Which I think is hilarious. That they, they they get these people to replace other actors. Mm-hmm. And they try to fit them in the role that the other actor should be in. And it doesn't really work. They Who's did, he supposed to be replacing? Dylan? Dylan. Okay. Because imagine this is Dylan. Yeah. Imagine this is Dylan taking her for a walk on the beach, helping her and stuff like right? that. Yeah. He's been gone for a while, but, you know, now he's, like, trying to help her and everything. Imagine him saying, as far as I'm concerned, B, you and Kelly are meant oh. to be. You know? Yeah, and he keeps calling him B. Right. I hate that. What the fuck is that? I think that's something Dylan used to call Brandon. No. Yes. Faith calls Buffy B. On Buffy. Okay. But I don't remember anybody else calling Brandon B. I'm pretty sure that Dylan did. All right, whatever. At least from time to time. Steve calls him Brando, and I think Dylan used to call him B. But they're trying to make this Noah guy the new Dylan. Yeah. And, sir. Nah. I know Luke Perry. (laughs) Do you now? I'm friends with Luke Perry. (laughs) I've worked with Luke Perry. You, sir are no Luke Perry. He's definitely not. That's a reference to the 1988 or 84 uh, presidential campaign for all of you guys. No, 88. Yeah, the 1988 uh, vice presidential campaign for all you you political junkies out there. Sure. Dan Quayle and and, uh, Lloyd Benson? No idea. Yeah. Yeah. So... He says to uh, Brandon, if you want me to back off, just say so. Mm-hmm. Like, And Brandon doesn't. Yeah. He swallows the bullshit and starts to soften. Which is stupid. Mm-hmm. Brandon's stupid. Noah's a predator. <laughs> Agreed. Noah needs, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger needs to come out of the marina and be like, get to the job, oh, Brandon. <laughs> He's a predator. Yeah. And then later, Brandon and Noah and David and Steve all go out together. Yeah. For, like, I guess a guy's night. It's kind of weird. It's like they were just fighting, and now they're all hanging out. They're looking for bands. Okay. Because remember, Noah comes up to David, and he's like, hey, let's uh, let's go look for bands. Yeah. I know, I know a lot of places in Los Angeles. He just got there from Hawaii, but apparently he was there before. He's he also, lived everywhere. Because he also runs into a waitress that he knows. So and, it's, and it comes out that his family's loaded. Right. He went, So he does have a bunch of money. Valerie blew it. Yep. He went to Harvard. His family's got a ton of money. Well, that's what he said, though. Like, we haven't seen the actual evidence, and I don't know that I trust him just because he says that. He definitely fucked that waitress, right? Uh, yeah. The way she was talking. She's like, I want some... Uh, what quality time with you later she mm. says he must be really good in bed yeah i guess so <laughs> the waitress is like hey i need a piece and uh valerie's just like he's poor but i want the dick mm. yeah so the guys are all hanging out together and it just seems off like the whole situation but yeah that's when he tells them about his family and everything yeah it is an off situation but he's trying to Fine bands. Yeah. For the peach pit because it's doing poorly. It's and been doing poorly. David's like, when Valerie was helping me run this place, man, she could really pinch a penny. Yeah, well, maybe he needs her back. Yeah. But she has no money to buy back in, so. No. But maybe she'll make a ton of money as a personal shopper's assistant. <laughs> Yeah, so that's what, like, Donna's working as the personal shopper for the lady who hired her last episode. Apparently she's working for several people now, somehow. Because the, the lady she's working for sent her a bunch of her friends. You know what I've, re- what I realized in hmm. Donna's, we'll get, it, 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 you'll, I think you'll, it'll become clear as we talk about Donna's storyline. 
Donna is, I think, supposed to be the Lucille Ball of this sh- show. Oh, yeah. She's like the physical comedy screwball, like, I'm in a wacky situation. Yes, like, for sure. They always try to do that with her. Well, the problem is I don't think she has the, the comedic chops for it. Yeah. Yeah, she's just kind of annoyingly floundering. Yeah. Tori Spelling, I know Lucille Ball. <laughs> I worked with Lucille oh, Ball. Lucille Ball is a friend of mine. You, ma'am, are no Lucille Ball. <laughs> but can we go to Donna's storyline, or yeah, are we not done with Kelly? No, I think we're I'm fucking done with Kelly. The only other thing I want to say about Kelly is that she, at the end of the episode, takes Noah's picture mm-hmm. and the ring from Brandon and puts them in a drawer together. Puts them together like as a wish of like <laughs> I wanted to come marry these life. things together. <laughs> so yeah, um, so Donna is. At this lady's house, Mm -hmm. talking about fashion. And then the lady's like, oh, my gosh, I forgot my dog has a vet appointment. Mm -hmm. And Donna's like, oh, I can take him. What kind of dog was that? Like a St. Bernard, maybe? It was a big It was a big dog. It wasn't a St. Bernard. St. Bernard's don't look like that. No, I can't picture it, but it was a big dog. It was like a short-haired brown dog, but big. Labrador? No. Rottweiler? I mean, it looked sort of like a Rottweiler, but I th- not quite. Yeah, I, don't I don't know if dog breeds well enough, but Doberman, maybe? Maybe. No. I think Doberman those are usually black, too. They, they have sh- uh, sharp faces, right? Yeah. This is a big, fat-faced dog. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, yeah, she volunteers to take this Some dog. Kind of bulldog, I think. But Probably. not But not the short bulldog, like a, like a bull mastiff or something. Yeah, that, that could be. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. I just... It's okay. I, I, I was thinking about it during the episode, and I, I couldn't figure it out. But she volunteers to take this giant dog to the vet, which is stupid. Like, that's not your job. That's not what you're being paid for. She didn't even ask you to do it. So. Yeah. Um, she takes the dog, and immediately when she's at the vet, she's on the phone with Valerie and Kelly. Mm-hmm. Talking about Noah. The three of them are talking about how hot he is. Noah's so cute. And the dog runs away. And at the same time, she gets a call from the boss lady. And she's like, no, you didn't mention that he hates the vet. Gotta go. Like, wh- why would she not mention, hey, he's a flight risk. Yeah. He, he hates the vet. You've never, you've never interacted with this dog before, but... Let me sit on this information. She didn't even have this leash on him. No, that was stupid, too. Like, she doesn't know what the fuck she's doing. You have the leash on the dog. She didn't have the leash on the dog, and she had him strapped into the seatbelt in the car somehow. <laughs> it's interesting. And then, yeah, and then she just opens the door. Like, of course he's going to run off. But mm-hmm. So she has lost the dog, and that's, like, all the whole wackiness situation she has going on. David's trying to help her find the dog. I can't find the dog. Ricky, I can't find the dog. <laughs> I'm going to get fired. Oh, she was annoying me. Yeah. So, and then at the end, she, oh, at one point, her and Valerie are shopping together. Yes. Because Valerie's helping her. Well, no, no, Valerie was there for a job interview. Yeah, Valerie was there for a job interview, and they were just talking to each other. Right. But, but she's, Donna is a fucking mess. Yeah, she's getting all these calls from all these clients, and she can't even keep them straight. Imagine Carol talking about hey. 210. Hey, now. <laughs> That's what Donna was like. She was like, I don't remember. What's this? Oh, what's going on? So Valerie freaking answers her phone and, like, fixes her life. Yeah. And so then they're talking about her helping. She wants to be an assistant. So that's what she's going to do. Valerie's going to work with Donna and be her assistant, keep her organized. And I don't know, they'll make millions of dollars. So who knows? Well, I mean, that does work because Donna really is supposed to just be like the, the fashion eyes, not the business head. So Yeah, exactly. Valerie will be the business head. <laughs> well, she is familiar with head. <laughs> wow. So and then the other partnership we have developing here. Oh, yeah. It. Fun. Well, well, first, if we're going to talk about Steve's storyline, mm-hmm. we got to start with the beginning of Steve's storyline. Oh, okay. Yeah, Steve, you, you wants, go. Steve wants to be a sports agent. Yeah, it's the same chick that he was hugging on last episode that got him in trouble. Yeah, Steve with, uh, yeah, in trouble with, what's her name? Uh, I, can, I can never remember her name. But anyway, um, so he uh, he wants to be a sports agent. He tells... 
Nat, he's like, yeah, this real life stuff's no harder than school. <laughs> so nice to be fucking rich. I have to worry about money. Um, but so he uh, he goes to pra- the practice and he's watching them and everything. And she comes up. She's like, hey, Steve, how you doing? And she hugs him and everything. He's like, look what I got for you, baby. And <laughs> shows her uh, Chemical Brothers tickets. I feel like I felt like that was like going to be a problem that it's going to be Chemical Brothers. But I guess not. We, what? Never mind. <laughs> you thought you thought the Chemical Brothers were going to spray chemicals <laughs> on the audience? I don't know. The Chemical Brothers have become terrorists. They're using chemical warfare. Shut up. Yeah. I don't understand what that means. Was that a joke? No. I don't. What do you, what do you mean? That, I don't want to say. No, tell me. Why did you think it was going to be a problem? Why? The fuck? Because. I can mute it if you want. Yes. All right. Here. We'll be right back. Yeah, okay, so she's insane. Uh-huh. Um, anyway. <laughs> remember the time I did that when you uh, didn't know it was coming and you thought you'd gone deaf? <laughs> yes. That was awesome. Anyway, so <laughs> he gives her the tickets, and immediately I say, you can back me up on this. Immediately I was like, that's a fucking NCAA violation. Like, Oh, yeah, he was very upset. These are, N- like... I, t- I told Carol, I was like, he can't even talk to them. He Like, he can't solicit his wares as an agent to them while they're in amateur status. They're not, they haven't declared for the draft. They're still, he could bring down the entire sports program at CU because these are major, major violations. And I said, and like, and he's giving gifts which to the athletes he seems like a really big moron that this is like what he wants to do and he knows nothing about how to do yeah, it that's not allowed at all and like you, so i thought it's like he just wanted to be an actor he woke up and put on a lab coat and said hey i'm gonna go be a doctor well, that's what steve does <laughs> so i thought i was like well maybe the episode maybe the people the writers aren't don't they don't know about this shit maybe like they'll just gloss over all this and it won't matter or whatever uh he gets a meeting with a big time sports agent. That not a real sports. This guy doesn't actually exist. I mean, the, the human being does. We saw him, yeah. but so, he's an actor. And mm-hmm. He's not portraying anyone real. Like you know, how sometimes they'll have real people like yeah. Steve Young on there. This guy's not a real person. Okay. Um. So he's playing. He's at the basketball gym and everything. And there, he's like, "Hey, I got something for you." And he gives him his Chemical Brothers tickets. He's like, "You get sprayed with chemicals." And um. <laughs> He's like, well, I gave these to her. And he's like, no, you fucking didn't. <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> and then um, he says to him basically all the stuff I said. He's yeah. like, look, I took this meeting because uh, your dad is a big booster of ours, a big friend of ours or whatever. So I'm doing this as a favor. You seem like a nice kid, but you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Because giving these girls gifts and stuff like that, it, you could end their entire careers. Mm-hmm. They could get they could get kicked off the team. They could be banned from competing in the NCAA because because that's I mean the N, the NCAA you you had brought up the point where you're like well maybe they won't come down on her because he's not really an agent he's just saying he's he's an agent right the NCAA is notoriously not really flexible with this shit like if there's even a hint of impropriety they will act. Um, so he gives him a dressing down and is like, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. So don't try to be a sports agent. Yeah. What I want to know though, is if this guy is not supposed to have anything to do with these amateurs cause he's a sports agent, mm-hmm. how did he know about and get back those tickets? I don't know. It's like, he's some kind of like supernatural being just like, <laughs> I stole them. Back. So here's the thing. There are, uh, <laughs> That's a very fan. The greatest supernatural being there is the ticket stealer. And that's Shut his up. catchphrase. <laughs> I liked the flourish you did with your hands. Like it was a magic trick, too. Like he was being initiated into the order of the ticket stealers. I stole them back. I was picturing like the genie. 
you know, like he just magically yeah. <laughs> appears the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> so uh, Rush Sanders talks to his son Steve. They're they're on the street or whatever. It's a walk and talk shot, mm-hmm. and he's like, you know what, Steve? Um, maybe you're more of a loser than I thought. <laughs> did not say that he's like you know what you need you need a dying business that you can make your own so he's like do you know how i i own a newspaper you know your best friend wants to work for a newspaper and i happen to own a newspaper that's uh, we're just talking about now yeah it's kind of weird it's like they just these writers they just make everything work the way they want it to like perfectly all the time the beverly caller or something it was supposed to be like a tabloid kind of place and it's all shut down it's like literally just an empty office yeah because apparently he fired everyone yeah rush sanders went through and just fucking massacred everyone Everyone was fired, laid off because, I don't know, they're losing money, I guess? Who knows? I don't know. But he's like, it's a newspaper. Make whatever kind of fucking newspaper you want. I don't want a tablet. And he's like, all right, Citizen Kane moment here. And uh, Brandon had gotten a job offer. For Seattle. Yeah, that's the, that's been going on in the background of the episode. For the Seattle Times. Mm-hmm. And... I don't even know why he applied for an out-of-state newspaper. Stupid. But he Well, did. he's having trouble finding a job. Maybe he was just having a desperate moment. I guess. But he did. And they're offering him a job. And he's like, you know what? Can you hold it open for a week? And they're because like, my girlfriend got shot. Yeah, he's like, yeah, my, well, my girlfriend got was in a drive-by. And they're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> he's like, no, she's going to be okay. But I need a little time. And they're like, all right, I can hold it open for a week. So... Uh, he's trying to decide whether or not they, it's not really a big plot point, but for a, a brief period of time, he's trying to decide whether or not he's going to do it. And he says something to her about it. And she's like, Oh yeah, take the job if you want. Sure. <laughs> she doesn't remember him. So she yeah. doesn't give a shit. She's like, yeah, go, go away. Make my life easier. Mm-hmm. I'll just fuck Noah. <laughs> um, and so then Steve talks to him and he's like, you know what? Don't go to Seattle. Come and work for me. I'll be the publisher. I don't even know what that means. I mean, I know what a publisher is, but he's like, I'll be the publisher. You be the editor in chief. So I guess Steve is going to handle the business, the business side yeah. of it. He's going to handle the business and Brandon will handle the creative stuff. But Brandon says no. Yeah. Because he doesn't want to go into business with Steve. He's like, you don't know anything about running a paper. And, and he's like, we need staff. Mm-hmm. We need writers. We need photographers. We need an art department. We need fucking uh, advertising salespeople. Yeah, we need a lot of people. We need all this stuff to run a newspaper, and we have nothing. And he's like, well, there's $60,000 left in accounts receivable that we can use to, you know, whatever. And he's like, I don't know. It's like, that's like what? I I, I don't even know. A couple months salary, maybe, for an entire staff? That's no. Uh, it seems like that would not. I mean, that would be like six months salary. Maybe you think it's like ten grand a month to pay everybody. Ten grand a month to pay how many people? Well, I mean, at least let's say three writers, uh, like four people in the art department, like two, three salespeople. Yeah, I guess a couple yeah. photographers. They'll need to get some advertisers pretty quick. Yeah, but yeah. So then Brandon decides he's going to stay. Not take this job. Mm-hmm. Because of something that Noah says, I think. Yeah. Yeah, because Noah's like, look, what, fuck you, man. Like, do, don't be you. <laughs> if you want to love her or whatever, just fucking do your life. And if you want to be a writer, you can write anywhere. Yeah. He's like, all right. So I'm going to take the offer, Steve. Do you think because Noah gave him this impassioned speech that he will back off of Kelly? I don't think so. I think, or at least I think Kelly's going to pursue him for sure. Yeah, when she gets out of the hospital, I which apparently they're going to keep her there forever. I think that'll be fun. <laughs> oh, goodness. And then her and Valerie will have new things to fight about. Yeah. Well, once it comes out that Noah's loaded, too. Yeah. That, that'll that just make her wet right there. Exactly. So that's all Valerie needs. <laughs> but, yeah, so uh, they're going to be in the newspaper business together, and they're going to call it the Beverly 
I don't know, beavers. And they were talking about bringing everybody in, though. Like, he, he's like, Donna can do fashion. and Yeah. Um, David can write about music. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. They're really, he's really depending on the whole gang to chip in on this newspaper. And Valerie can write a column about whoring. And here's the question, though. Can any of them even write? Like, Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's certainly not going to have Donna do it because she doesn't even like Don, Donna, writing. Donna can't even read. <laughs> yes, she can. No, it's a joke, Carol. Okay. <laughs> about how dumb she is. She is a little dumb, though. God love her. She did lose a dog. She's not. I mean, like, fashion. We didn't finish that, did we? What? Her dog losing oh, escapade. Yeah, no, the dog just shows up the next morning when she finally is like, oh my gosh, I've got to go tell her, i got to come clean. The laziest, like, that's how they, that's how the writers resolve this. She's going to go tell the woman that she lost her dog and then he just strolls up. Which is exactly so, like an I Love Lucy episode. Yeah. But here's the thing that, like you said, the dog didn't get the appointment. Yeah, the dog was supposed to get some shots and get groomed. Right. Like, if nothing else, she should notice he's not cleaner than he was yesterday right and i think it'd be funny that he just dies from, oh my god rabies or something like that because he <laughs> didn't get shots that he was supposed to get well yeah yeah it's stupid or the like <laughs> she reveals she's like oh it's glad it's a good thing he got those shots he needs to get uh, an insulin shot every month or whatever he dies <laughs> well and why did she believe they need to keep him overnight because that was a lie Donna gave. Oh, something came yeah. up at the vet. But she he's not even sick. Her off. She kept pushing her off for like a couple days. If you didn't see your dog for a couple days because they were at the vet, wouldn't you be like, let me call the vet? What is yeah, going on? For sure. It's so weird. This is uh, The writers are on crack. I don't know. <laughs> it's a weird episode. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, the Kelly thing's interesting. Yeah. The paper might be interesting. I guess it has the potential. I don't know what they're going to call it. Yeah. I'm sure we'll find out next week. The Tadler or whatever. I don't know. That's from something. Yeah, I know. It's from a movie we did, right? I think so. I don't know. Is that from Ace Ventura? Or no, The Mask? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I think that's everything, though, right? We've talked I think about so. Everybody. David's struggling, but yeah. he'll be fine. Well, yeah, because, you know, he's surrounded by rich people, so. He'll get my He'll chemical romance to play. Right. They'll release acid rain <laughs> in the peach pit after dark. And everyone will be like, oh, my God, my face is melting. It was great. Uh. It's a great time. And then it'll be packed. Ew. Yep. So you can write us at late fee 1994 mm-hmm. Check out our website at www.rotrolatefee.com. Mm-hmm. And share the tapes with your friends. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.